Hi, I'm Stan Rowe. I'm the uh, Chief Scientific Officer at Edwards Life Sciences, and I also run uh, Advanced Technology there, which is an innovation hub within a medium-sized cardiovascular company. Great, thanks. We're really glad to have you here. So, Stan, how do you think the industry is going to perform in the near future, medium, near to medium future, maybe the next five years or so? You know, I think that there, the industry is under a lot of price pressure. Um, there's a lot of pressure from regulatory bodies. Um, CMS has a lot of um, initiatives for cost control, mm -hmm. comparative effectiveness. So I think um, it's a tough environment, and um, a lot of the requirements have increased. So um, I think that, that a lot of new products are going to have to go through a lot more expensive process. But that being said, um, if you look at the health of the industry over the last couple of years, where the same environment has really existed, we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, profits are looking okay. I think people are being more efficient with their, with their investments in R&D, and they're improving the efficiency of manufacturing. They're looking uh, to leverage their technology in um, international markets, and, uh, and that's all paying off. Mm. So what's one piece of advice you would give to a startup in this industry? To a startup? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure I have just one. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, uh, I think there are several you know, key lessons. One is perseverance, right? Um, you never get it right the first time. And that is that you have to be very adaptive. You have to go out and learn. You learn from your early bench top tests. You learn from your fatigue testing. You learn from your validations and verifications. You learn in your first clinical studies. And mm -hmm. so really being quick to learn and adapt and being really close to your technology so that you can advance it is really critical. Um, and then the second key thing is, um, you know, you've got to have funding to keep the doors open and to advance. And so having great relationships with industry and venture capital or angel networks to uh, advance your technology is going to be critical. What do you see as the most significant threat to the medical device industry and why? Well, I think uh, the biggest threat to us right now, I think, is if there is a large increase in the um, regulatory requirements in Europe. And I yeah. see, I've seen some, um, some discussions of that to have more of a PMA type process. And I think Europe has been a place where we've been able to go and do our early clinicals. Uh, the CE mark's been uh, uh, achievable in a reasonable uh, manner. It, you know, we don't have huge burdens of efficacy, but we have to prove safety. Uh, the big burden there has always been getting reimbursement, right? You have to go country by country to get reimbursement. But now if the regulatory hurdle gets raised, then I think one of the key places for us to innovate um, will change. And I think uh, that would be a tough, tough place for us. And, and obviously Europe is this at least the second largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, where do you predict innovation will go to next if, if Europe does raise the bar on its regulatory process? You know, I think it'll, uh, very likely it would go to South America okay. um, or certain areas of Asia where, um, where there are some really good um, clinicians. I mean, you think uh, great clinicians in New Zealand and Australia, mm -hmm. a lot of great physicians in uh, Brazil and Argentina. Those are, those are good places where studies could be done. Right, okay. Yeah, Australia has a fairly relaxed regulatory process. It's very similar to the CE mark, if I'm correct. Well, it's reasonable, yes. Okay. So what advice would you give an engineer starting in this industry? Mm. You know, I think um, the most valuable engineers that, that I run into are those who have a fairly broad range of experience. Okay. Uh, so the engineers who spend time in manufacturing, maybe in quality, they do R&D, they get a broad range of exposure, maybe even marketing or, or clinical engineering, uh, makes them more valuable because 
the idea that we can kind of define a product that engineers can just build. We say, look, here's the perfect product, go build it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really work. Yeah. What you need are engineers who understand better what cl clinicians really want, right? So that if we can say, if they can get closer to understanding the market, they can understand the physician requirements while understanding the quality, regulatory, manufacturing requirements, they're in a much better position to really innovate. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage them to get a broad range of experience. What about other industries? Do you think they should go work in other industries first or in addition to? I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Um, I think if you have a good background in mechanical engineering or biomedical engineering, um, most companies and even startup environments give you huge exposure to um, everything that we have to do. <laughs> and uh, so you can definitely learn on the job very successfully. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. No, my it was pleasure. great to meet you nice, too. Nice to meet you too. Yeah.